well, I will say it's really good. Sorry, say it again. Uh, I, I don't think Malcolm. I don't with, think Malcolm's here. Uh, the tag match for the Dusty Rhodes, the Dusty Cup, or Wait, the tag hold, team. Cup. Sorry, can you say that again? I don't think Malcolm's here yet. No, Malcolm's here. Oh, okay. We're talking. I just, I just started. I just started on the Dusty Rhodes Classic. So. Dusty Rhodes Classic. All right. Let's go. We can yeah. do that. Yeah. So it was obviously it was Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes versus Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin. Uh, for me overall, it was a good ass tag team uh match. Um, I do think I don't know. I feel like Baron Corbin, like obviously, when you think of when you look at Braun Breaker's agility compared to Baron Corbin, it just feels like it's just so one. It's so lopsided. Yeah, because like, it's like, Baron Corbin. I can't stand the man, but it's Braun Breaker, so I have to watch. <laughs> well, yeah, it's just a massive hatred for Baron Corbin. <laughs> Hello? So, yeah, like the first match. He's not, but because of the fact that he's been pushed as Kane, as like the, the other Kane, so to speak, um, seeing Braun being the standout of that team, it, like it just makes more sense. Wait, you saying Barry Corbin is like the new Kane? Yeah, you didn't. You, the way how he's been pushed ever since he's been brought up to main roster, le legit everything that was pushed towards him, Kane was that. You cannot tell me that. You can't deny that. Rob, like you mean Baron Corbin? Yes. When he first came to WWE, like when he first was with long hair and all. Yes. I don't see it, but okay. I understand. Everything. He was getting the he was getting the money in the bank briefcase, right? Icy title, right? Yeah. Am I wrong? Yeah. All the stuff. Everything was pushing him very, very rushed. And he was they were li li legit looking at him like as if he was like the next king. Huh. I didn't think of it that way, but yeah. I usually don't think about much when it comes to Baron Corbin, so I'll take your word for it. Yeah, so that's what I, that's what I see. So, Malcolm, what do you think of it's Kane? It's great to see Baron. It's great to see Baron on the show, getting another opportunity, chance, you know, all that stuff. Because if he's in the main roster, he's literally going to be like uh, Chris Hero, just enhancing talent every single time. Like hell, the last time he was on a, a show, I think it was on SmackDown, and he enhanced uh, Cameron Grimes for like a minute match. You know? Um. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. It took me a while to remember that, but yeah, I remember. Cameron Grimes is like, has he been doing anything lately on SmackDown? Hello? He's been on NXT the whole time. Oh, Cameron Grimes? No. Yeah, Cameron Grimes. Yeah, Cameron Grimes I think Cameron Grimes had, uh, was it for the uh, United States Championship uh, bout? Like a qualifier match, and that was it. Yeah, they're not doing much as Cameron Grimes. He was amazing in NXT, though, my opinion. Malcolm, you're I muted. Do, just I do let think you after WrestleMania, they'll probably push him more, of course. Yeah, Malcolm, you're muted, just letting you know. But yeah, um, Baron, uh, so Baron Corman tagging was Braun Breaker. Braun Breaker, man, that man is a beast. Like he's the son of Rick Steiner and sounds like Rick Scott Steiner. Like Malcolm said, he's afraid of that guy. Hello, Malcolm. Hello. Any wait, wait, wait. Can you hear him? No, I cannot. You can hear him? Yes. Malcolm, mute mute your mic and unmute again and then see if you can speak. Yes. Huh. I don't hear him at all. Really? Yeah, That's Malcolm, weird. can you leave and come back? This is kind of weird. He's connecting again. He's connecting again. All right. So, yeah, he um these guys like Baron Corbett and Braun Breaker, they uh, were doing a tag team for the Dusty Cup against... Trick Williams or Carmelo Hayes, 
which Trick Trick Williams is like he's gonna be a main star on the main roster soon. They see him as a main event potential, which is great, but also like obviously the the just the wait, speak again, Malcolm. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Oh, okay. there we go. I don't know what happened but before. Like, but you yeah. but you know how it is when you when you elevate to the main roster now you got to do it all over again you got to like build up your character build up the story build up everything in order for the audience to see you stand out i'm oh, trying yeah. to think who would be a good person for cameron grimes to feud with like as, as a good starter it would be austin theory Ooh, yeah they're, they're both on they're both on uh SmackDown, so more most likely it would be Austin Theory mm-hmm. or Grayson Waller, whichever one. Are are is are, are they um is Austin Theory and uh, uh Grayson Waller are they, are they going to be like forming like a trio with uh, Logan Paul? No, oh, I well, can see it well, like Grayson Waller and Austin Theory and yeah, Logan Paul. Yeah, it makes Paul. sense because it's more it's more content shit, like it's more content creator stuff. So mm-hmm. I can see that. Um. But obviously, it's going to be what towards WrestleMania, and I don't know if they're going to try to build Logan Paul against Kevin Owens again, which I wouldn't mind seeing. But the only person that can go against Logan Paul in a certain way like that will be LA Knight, and I would love mm-hmm. to see him getting pushed just for him to get the U.S. title for him now. Have him go against Kevin Owens if that's the case mm-hmm. it will be a great summer bout, you know, and then you can go from there. Agreed. Agreed. But like, yeah, Austin Fury, Grayson Waller, and Logan Paul would be a great stable as the Mega Douches. Oh, I'm not... I, I thought of I thought of a great name for him already too, the Influence. Uh, doesn't Cassie McKay and Jesse? Don't they have that in Impact TNA? Who's uh? I don't. Who's uh? Don't... In... No, they were called the Inspiration. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah, the the Influence because they're influencers. Yeah. I just oh I thought it was such a douchey name and it fits him so well. Yes, it does, especially with Austin and Waller and Logan, and then you can put Jake Paul in there later as a manager or something. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, what wh- wh- uh, wh- what's next on the card for Vengeance? Next on the card was what Jack versus uh, Joe Gacy. I gotta go back and that watch that one. No disqualification match. Mm. And I, uh, can... I greatly respect Dominic D- D- uh, D- D- Dijakovic or uh, uh, D- Dijakovic uh, slash Dijak now for multiple reasons. One, I, uh, I've seen a bunch of his stuff, uh, even on uh, the Indies, because I was just impressed. And uh, I found out he was Croatian, and of course my uncle's Croatian, so I just gained a lot of respect from that immediately too. Yeah, just by his last name, Djokovic. Djokovic. Damn it. <laughs> Dominic. <laughs> the, Dominic Djokovic. Yeah, but this was like a no disqualification match. So Joe Gacy coming from CCW, like this is like nothing compared for him, but he did a good job though. Is the schism still around? Schism? Schism. No. Schism. Schism is not around. Why do you, uh, why do you think Ava, Ava Rain is now the GM? Wait, really? Yeah, she's the GM of uh, NXT. Oh, okay. Is she uh, d- 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 doing a good job? Uh, We were talking about how she doesn't seem like she's like all the way there. Like she doesn't want to be there, but she's just doing it just to do it. Mm. And I can't look at her. I can't see the eyebrows any eyebrows anymore. It's like, not the eyebrows; it's the eyelashes. The eyelashes, because yeah, what Solitaire said, like all you can see is just the eyelashes. <laughs> it's the eyes. So yeah, in this match, they pulled out all the stops, and Joe Gacy, like Coco said, like remind me of a young Bray Wyatt, because they're similar in that kind of thing. And like with the Bray cultism. Was... Occultism. Yeah, if, if if Bray was still alive, the feud they would have would be beautiful. 
Yeah, because like uh, what Bray Wyatt did that corner thing that he looked with like behind, like I don't know how he didn't snap his back, and then there's yeah, Joe and Gacy so he did that, the spider walk. Yeah, and then Joe Gacy did the corner thing where he was upside down smiling. That's man. If they tag together, that'd be something. Like who can outdo who? But uh, Coco was saying like they should be a stable of Joe Gacy and the psychotic people with Nikki mm-hmm. Cross, Dexter Loomis, who else? Um, like oh, who else it was? Would... Yeah, like all, all the really. Oh, who did you mention? Talk. Oh, Liv Morgan. You mentioned Liv Morgan. Yeah, I said that uh, if there was a faction, it would be Joe Gacy, Liv Morgan, Nikki Cross, and Dexter Loomis. Yeah. But also, like, there was Just... a spot where they put, like, Legos on a table. Apparently, they did go through the table, and I missed it. I don't know how Legos. Yeah. Oh my god. That that okay, look. We, we we've had glass, thumbtacks and barbed wire. Legos is too far, man. I'm t- I'm saying it now. Legos is always too far cuz like man, that shit really hurts. You ever step on a Lego? Just one yes. Lego? Yeah, I did and I'm still limping to this day. <laughs> yeah. But that's what happened. They put leg. Joe Gacy put Legos on the table. Who went through it? Dijak went through it. Oof. I don't. I'm asking. Like, who went through it? Dijak. I, I didn't say that. Yeah, I didn't I see that so. match. Also, there's a spot where like uh, Joe Gacy put duct tape around Dijak's eyes so he couldn't see. That was pretty cool to <laughs> see. But then mm-hmm. they had to take the uh, duct tape out and like that hurts. Like, it's your eyebrows and shit in the back of your hairs, and... Ah, you ever try that? Malcolm, I know you've been there before. No. I'm going to refrain from answering. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, moving on, because the Doif has way too many personal demons. Oh, my God. So what was the I next match? The tag match. It was the tag match. It was the family, the Angelo family versus the six in- the intergender bud. six man woman yeah. tag. Yeah, it was a mixed tag versus. Uh, it was the 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 family, the uh, the Angelo <laughs> the Angelo family versus Out the Mud, which is OTM. Mm. Yeah, first time I've seen OTM. First time I've seen OTM, and kind of weird that they have a name called Out the Mud. But also, you see, wait, you've seen them before. Oh, this, they is were a, on, uh, this is the first time I've seen them. No, it was not. Yes, it is. I would remember. <laughs> but yeah, OTM, uh, Lucius something, and the other guy is who? I don't know. But yeah. you've seen them before. No, this is literally the first time I've seen them. Why do you think I was surprised by saying they, they're on, literally the. the I literally said, like, Hold on, are they literally Crime Time 2.0 because they're the same exact gimmick? Hold on, obviously OTM are a little, 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 they're not memorable, but at the same time, like, they were there. Yeah, but I don't remember any of them. I'm just saying it's the first time I see them, but they're pretty good. They're very talented. Like, I like them for my first time seeing them. Was and... it Devon? Sorry? I'm trying to check the matches. Um, wait, this is Deadline. We was watching Deadline, I think. Out the Mud wasn't on Deadline. That was like the Women's and Men's Iron Survivor and something else. But this was... Which was what? You got like Rizzo in there and it kept reminding me of uh, the Jerky Boys. Hey, I'm Frank Rizzo. Was it No Mercy? No Mercy was September 30th. I'm trying to figure out now. Yeah. But it was the family uh, versus out the mud. It was a like very interesting so we, match. So we did watch it. We did watch it. Where were they? Where were they? No mercy. Okay, so this was no mercy. This was in September 30th last year. It had Blair Davenport and Kalani Jordan. We saw that. Baron Corbin versus Braun Breaker. We saw that. We saw Trick Williams versus uh, Dominic. We saw that. Remember, because he was he became the NXT American Championship uh, champion, and then. Lost it, I think, a day later or two days later. Um, um, we saw the. I think I left for a couple minutes and then came back. You probably did. 
Yeah, because I, I remember Trick family. Williams versus Dirty Dominic. Yeah. And then I was the... came back to Ilya versus Carmelo. Okay, so it was the family versus OTM and versus the Creed brothers. And, o and uh, the family lost. I mean, not the family, excuse me. The family won. Um, and it was Chase U. Chase, wait, OTM, the Creed brothers, and Angelo Garza and uh, Humberto Carrillo. Excuse Angel me. Garza and Humberto Carrillo versus OTM. Yeah. Lucian Prince and Bronco Nima. Yeah. Yeah, so we saw that. So it was no Noam Dar uh, uh -oh. winning against Butch. I don't, where <laughs> was then... I? I'm trying to remember where I went after Trick Williams because I came back during the Ilya Dragunov. Yeah, so Ilya beat Carmelo, and then Becky beat Tiffany Stratton. It, it, yeah, it was Extreme Rules match on that one. So, yeah, we've seen them. The thing about OTM is that they're not standing out as they should be. Like, they're not, they are memorable, but at the same time aren't. Like, because they had other people that came up. Like, you had um, Cree Brothers during that time, the, uh, the, the family, uh, Obviously, Los Lotharios. Los Lotharios, yeah. Yeah. Nah, so, so they're good, but they just don't stick out. They're not sticking out as they should. Right. But they, I think they will now. Like, obviously, when you see the tag teams, you see the family, you see Chase Few. Uh, Gallus, I think, is still up there, and anyone else. Like, obviously, they, they stand out, but... Okay, but so think... my first time seeing them, they were pretty good at OTM, even though I... Don't know how I missed him on the No Mercy show. <laughs> also, also because of the fact that they have Jada Parker now, it, they, obviously they're going to stand out more. When you add a girl like that to your to your staple or, or uh, to your faction, it looks good. So, yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. And that's my first time ever seeing Jada Parker like that. For your first time seeing Jada Parker like that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we were debating whether she was like Santino Morella's daughter, but she's not. That's uh, Ariana Grace. Uh, somebody yeah, I don't else. think I've seen her. I don't think I've seen Ariana Grace's work yet. Well, 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 where does she work? I think she's just starting out she's in NXT, mainly, like just started. So she's mainly, usually you'll see these people on NXT level up. Mm. Which, which I never seen NXT yeah, level up. Yeah. yeah, they it's mainly on uh, uh, YouTube. They'll show the single matches. Oh, okay. I don't All even right. think it's on Google or anything. So NXT mm. level up. So yeah. So that's basically like the utter farm system for NXT. Even though NXT is supposed to be the farm system for the main roster. So there's a farm system for a farm system. I mean, granted, the PC is where they tr they get their training. So. Yeah. For, for for level up to be like the main event, so to speak, uh, for the main roster, like. Well, I kind of get it. Yeah. yeah, NXT yeah. level up in order to get into NXT, and then from people of NXT trying to get to the main roster. Yeah, I understand. So, so is it like two hundred five live? But is it way better than two hundred five live? Um. Yes and no, but I don't watch NXT level up like that. Okay. And even though some there's some notable people that's that are from NXT that will be on NXT level up just because of the fact that obviously when you are creating an episode, you're not getting all the matches that you want, right? So they're gonna be mm -hmm. all of the dark matches. NXT level up, hold on. Let's see if level up. It, Hank it's Walker and what, Tank Ledger. Like, AEW Dark was back in the day. Yeah. Right? But basically what that is, yep, yep, yep. So, yeah. So that match happened. D'Angelo family wins. Hey, how you doing? Adriana Rizzo. Okay. So who's next on the card? There was, hold on. There was like a... There was like a package a for like... There was a segment package backstage for like Noam Dar and his stable, which is... Whoa, oh my God, I already forgot their name. The metaphor. The metaphor. It was like, I gotta say, their entrance is awesome. I don't know why. Whenever anybody does, does standing there just posing and not doing anything, it's pretty awesome. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm just, I just had to say that because that was pretty badass. It was, it was always cool every time it happened. Yeah. 
So the next match is. Oh, okay, Lyra. Uh, the women's Ch NXT Championship match. It started out as Lyra Valkyrie and Roxanne Perez. It was a decent match. It went back and forth. To be honest, it really was good. It was kind of slow, but at the same time. It really was good, and then of course Lola Vice came out with her break it, uh, breakout contract. Yeah. For her to come in and for the match, it, it's their version of uh, Money in a Bank, so to speak. So she won for the women's uh, um, tournament, and of course Oba Femi won his for the men's tournament. And so uh, Lola coming out, I think. They did like up. way more suspenseful because like. Yeah, it was good at yeah. first, but then it got way more suspenseful when she came out because, like, there were so many near falls. Like, we're thinking Lola's going to win. And... Submissions, submissions, all of that. Like, yeah. <sighs> also, Roxanne Perez, like, her nameplate, like, there's an explanation point in her name. So, are we supposed to shout her name? Like, Roxanne Perez, the prodigy. Okay. Well, to be fair, sometimes. Not not everybody's gonna say her last name like that. Okay. So if you if you just know her as just Roxanne, obviously like it, it well, will make sense with the exclamation part. So also, yeah, and actually, and to correct yourself, uh, humanoid, it's it's not what you were doing. If uh, you are gonna say her, yeah, name, you gotta it say it better. Roxanne, Roxanne, do you have the headlights? I don't know the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say that NXT, I love how each person has a different nameplate when they come out. I do. I, I, it gives more character. It like, b because back in the day, it used to just be like legends or just like the really big named, like top wrestlers who get the custom plates. Yeah, Undertaker. But now, yeah, exactly. Or Bray Wyatt. And it just now it gives it more character to each wrestler, which I think it deserves. And I think now they're starting to put more effort into the production, even on a lesser scale in NXT. Now that the Demon Weasel Kevin Dunn is gone. <laughs> Demon Weasel. I love it. Not No longer Bucky Beaver, but the Demon Weasel. Yeah, I agree. Demon Weasel or Satan Weasel. You got to pick your favorite. It, they're both good. It's just Bucky Beaver is the top tier one because of Jim Cornette. It's, it's good too, but it's just he's pure evil. Kevin Dunn or Jim Cornette? No, I got to be careful what I say here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so you don't want Jim Cornette coming after you. No, no I, <laughs> I like... I, I'm just going to say I hate Kevin Dunn and leave it at that. Yeah. So yeah, uh, so Lyra wins, and then they like fight to the backstage, which we have like a segment with Chase U doing a calendar thing, and the funniest awkward thing is like Fia Hall and some other dude. I, for I already forgot his name. I so, love the concept of Chase U so much. Yeah, like this dude, unknown dude. I forgot his name. We're like, hey, Fia, do you have a, a date for uh, Valentine's? Like, no, no, I do not. No, no. Would you like to be my day? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, uh, yes. That was kind of funny and awkward at, at the same time. You should have Coco, seen. Well, well, uh, well, well, what do you think of uh, Chase U's uh, stuff? Coco? What do you mean? What do you think of Chase oh. U? I mean, Chase U... Although I gotta say, Harlem Bravado, Andre Chase, he's been around a long time. I'm finally glad he finally made it to the main raw, to the the big show, which is WWE. But, yeah, like he finally has a a shtick to, to make him stand out. Yeah, because he was a Harlem yeah, Bravado for the longest time. True, but the last time they ever had a, a, a title bout, more or less, was when it was last year around this time. Yeah, with, uh, with NXT, it was pretty deadly. New Day, Chase U, and Gallus, I think. Mm. Gallus. Oh, I forgot about that team. Mark Coffee and Wolfgang. That was a yeah, good team. Fair. Wait, no, Mark Coffee. Wait, wait. No, 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 no. Wait, Chase. It was Chase U. I could be wrong now. It was Chase U, Gallus, Pretty Deadly, and the and, New Day. Uh, the Pre Brothers. I don't think it was the New Day. If it was oh, the, the New Day. 
then Gallus won that mount, that bout. And uh, yeah, but that was the last time I ever saw, in terms of being on a PLE, where Chase U had any opportunity. The last time they had an opportunity on a PLE, it was it was Thea, it was Thea going against Lyra, or one of the uh, NXT championships. It was either no, it was against Tiffany. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, it was against Tiffany Stratton. That's the last time I saw them on any type of level where they were going for a title. Other than that, they're better off in segments or promos or something like that. And yeah, they're pra- they're basically like Alpha Academy. Uh, Alpha, Alpha, Alpha Academy. Academy. They're basically like that right now. Chase University, their university, but Alpha Academy is like what college? <laughs> I, I'm guessing. It's like Ch- Chase U is co- uh, college and Alpha Academy is university. Yeah. No, it's the other way around. Chase U is university. It's literally Chase University. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that happened. We also get another backstage segment. Not a segment, like a package. A, a new person coming back. New person coming in saying he has three faces and I'd automatically thought it was Mick Foley. But then they go like <laughs> something about... Into the darkness or some shit. Yes, Mick Foley is coming out of retirement. Well, they said that, three faces. Who else would it be? <laughs> when you think of the three up, faces. Uh, uh, doink. Doink? <laughs> With the three <laughs> faces? Well, yeah, Matt Bourne, Ray Apollo, and Steve Lombardi, the Brooklyn Brawler. Yeah, it Doink. be Jeff Hardy. Doink is coming to NXT, confirmed. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Can you imagine? All right. So the next Alabama match. Alabama Doink. Alabama Doink. Oh, God. Uh, so the next match was a NXT North American Championship match. Dragon Lee versus a guy i never seen before, but I'm so impressed by him. Oba Femi. Jesus Christ, this man. I don't think yeah, I've seen so- his work either. So he he won the breakout contract for the men's side to get an opportunity at a title. Mm. He took he he ca- basically cashed it in, so to speak, on when Dragon Lee was the uh, North American champion at that time. Yeah, and that's what happened. And then of course you see the rematch where Dragon Lee, you know, obviously lost. But it's great to see Oba like Oba. Oba, we kept saying it tonight. Like Oba is a mixture of Bobby Lashley, Keith Lee, uh, and Powerhouse Hobbs, uh, and Powerhouse Hobbs from AEW. Yeah, yeah. The the way how he's moving and the way how he just the way how he's being pushed, he's supposed to be pushed the way how Paula Cruz is supposed to be pushed. Like Paula Cruz, the way how he was coming out as the Nigerian prince or king or whatever. Two years ago, yeah, or three years ago, like that momentum is gone. You don't see that anymore. Yeah, because Apollo is back to uh, just being Apollo. And, and he's not here, but now Apollo, he's not even on Raw like that. He's on main event. Oh, oh. wow, he went down. Exactly. Okay, brought... I got a rant. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead, on sir. Roster just to get a main event. I have to rant about this because. I have always loved Apollo Crews since his debut in, I want to say, NXT Brooklyn back in the day. Yeah. That was the very first time I ever saw him wrestle, and I was immediately impressed. And that's what got me, like, that was my first NXT pay-per-view or NXT anything ever. So that's what got me to continue watching the show and then getting super excited to see him on the main roster debut hoping he goes for not the world title to me he was perfect intercontinental championship uh contender immediately because him i i personally think the intercontinental championship is the greatest championship and the most prestigious like championship in wrestling history in my opinion because all of the greats technical greats have held that championship and have made it elevated it and apollo could have done that but they just wasted him and it hurts and now he's on main event and hearing that is soul crushing yeah but you know if you like apollo Crews, you should see his independent work before he joined wwf 
His name was Uha Nation, and my God, he was a beast. I gotta give that a watch. Yeah, uh, his Uha Nation. Uha Nation. Send uh, me some matches uh, the next chance you get. Okay, I will, because yeah, I saw some Uha Nation matches. I go like, oh my God, this dude is amazing. And then I heard he signed to WWE. I go like, oh shit, it's about to go down. But then he became Apollo Crews, and then it, all of it happened. I went to a uh, WWE live show in Edmonton one time, and uh, we were, of course, saying hi, getting autographs from the wrestlers. Uh, not a lot came up to uh, g g give autographs because they had to go to work. It was uh, uh, Natalia, of course, came up, who was super nice, of mm -hmm. course. Rhino, which made me super happy because I have I, I brought an ECW DVD, and I actually got him to sign it. Nice. Um, and, uh, <laughs> James Ellsworth. <laughs> oh my God. All right. <laughs> and, uh, Apollo Cruz was there too. And, uh, I didn't get a chance to get an autograph, but I said to him, you deserve the Intercontinental Championship. And, and he did say to me, it's coming. Like he, he, he gave me just a big smile and just like, I was, <sighs> it's just, it's so disappointing what they did with him, man. Was it like, didn't you also say you called him Devon Dudley or was that Adam that did that? I think that was Adam. Oh, yeah. Or something like that. But, I don't, you know yeah. what? The biggest achievement he has done was him winning at uh, WrestleMania. Yeah. In a really Thank weird you. match, but yeah, he did win. Yeah, at least I mean, he got he on WrestleMania. His, he won against Big E, so. Yeah. Man, I miss Big E. Yeah, I miss Big E, too. Yeah. So, oh, Uba, oh, shit, sorry, Oba, 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 yeah, he won in a magnificent way, and then we go backstage to chase you thing again, Lexus King comes out, and Solitaire was the best line of the night, hey, it's a 90s vampire, looking like a reject of the Lost Boys, <laughs> but yeah, his fans are hilarious, because they want to be called the uh, Lexican, what was it called, again? Lexus King? Lexus His King. Lexus. His fans yeah. called him like, yeah, you know, the uh, Geppetto thing, and but they called themselves the Lexing something. Oh God, I can't remember. But Lexus goes like, no, nah, we can't do that. <laughs> the Lexus Offenders. Oh, <laughs> the Lexus Offenders. That's the one. He was on Twitch <sighs> saying like, ah, oh, do you want us to call themselves the Lexus Offenders here? <laughs> no, we can't do that. <laughs> but it was hilarious. <laughs> like, don't do that. <laughs> That's like, um, it reminds me of a funny joke I saw while I was watching the YouTube channel Jack's Films, where he wanted to come up with the name for his fan base, uh, and he gave a bunch of fans a chance to answer, and... <laughs> My favorite was uh, Jack Off. I was about to say that. It's like, tell me it's Jack Offs. <laughs> J Jack Hole, J Jack Holes was a good one. Jack too. Holes, yeah. So Alexis King is in the back, and the guy that was hitting on Fia Hull comes in, and they start fighting, and it ends there. And we go back to the, another backstage where like Roxanne and Lo and uh, Roxanne and Lola are fighting, and they had to be separated. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Her name is Lola Vice. Lola Vice. Lola. And I thought that was Triple H in the back, but he was way too skinny, so I think it was Adam Pierce breaking him up. Well, it could be somebody else. Yeah. Somebody else. But yeah, but then we get to the main event of the evening. And this is where I can finally contribute to some more conversation. Yeah, the Dorf <laughs> can finally contribute to society. <laughs> oh, it is boy. for the NXT Championship. Ilya Dragunov versus, versus Whoop That Trick. Trick Williams. Oh my goodness. This was a banger. I gotta say, man, when he makes his main event debut, no, if he ever has a WrestleMania match, that crowd is gonna be insane when they chant Whoop That Trick in the oh, arena. It, it's WrestleMania crowds just chanting Whoop That Trick is it, it 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 literally it'll be like deafening. Yes, indeed. Yeah. But on the other hand, you have the czar. Ilya oh. Dragunov. 
Ilya Dragunov. I love this man so much. To me, he is the arch enemy, arch enemy, and like the other side of the coin of the ring general Gunther. Would you like to see him join Imperium if he ever goes to the main roster? Uh uh. He will always be Gunther's arch nemesis, and I think he should be the one to dethrone the general. We've had this conversation before. I, well, I just want to say this one last time. The perfect way to, well, not the perfect way. I'm just saying the perfect crowd heat is what I'm saying. Yes. Yes. And it just, I, 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 I just, I feel like because they've had two matches already and just trilogy, man, make it a trilogy and like SummerSlam, just anything but mania would be the perfect place for it mania 40 is my dream spot for that match 60 days it was away just, it yeah etched in history man so yeah we got nxt stand deliver on a friday saturday's wrestlemania 40 night one and then night two is the next day on a sunday mm-hmm but yeah trick william comes out with carmelo yeah, i forgot we forgot to mention that in the Dusty tag team match. Uh, Trick uh, speared uh, Carmelo by accident. So, oh. oh, and also like uh, Trick injured his injured, like you know, injury wise, Kate, uh, work wise, got his yeah, leg, air quote, air injured. quote leg injury. So the, he was going into that match with a leg injury as well. So yeah, then this next match, what you think, Coco? All right, I'll be back. You guys can start talk. All right. Okay. Keep talking. All right, so this match started out like a great Malcolm. Go on. Yeah, like it started out immediately with, I believe Ilya just like went for like a boot immediately, and yeah. then uh, they started going back and forth, and then he and then uh, Trick busted open uh, Ilya oh, yeah. immediately, just like, just oh, it it was it was a little nasty, I gotta say, but. It, it really added that extra violence to the match because the, they, they were working on it. Like they, uh, uh, tr they worked the nose throughout the, the whole match as it was going on. S same thing with, um, with, uh, tr tricks leg, uh, during the match as well. Yeah. So they're like breaking and that story into the, they're bringing that storyline into this match. Like... And just, the, the carnage in this match was awesome and just and 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 the performance from uh trick like uh the 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 kicks the the forearms from Ilya, the i few of my favorite spots like especially was um when uh trick was doing uh that symphony as a destruction drop and like elbow yes Yep. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah. There's one spot where, like, uh, Ilya is uh, taking out a Trick William out into the floor, but he landed on his leg the wrong way, and it looked like he, so bad. I go, like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that was a really ugly, fo uh, a, a really uh, ugly spot. But, yeah, the adrenaline in them, he kept on working through it. Also, Trick William has his leg injury that he's working on. So both of them have bad legs at this point. And again, and uh, the, they did the uh, the, the accidental uh, attack spot again to, I think it was uh, Carmelo uh, first. Yeah, because like uh, Trick William was in the corner of the steps and uh, Carmelo was outside with Ilya and Ilya threw Carmelo into Trick. So yeah, callback from the first match where like Carmelo accidentally... Fears trick, so now it's even. Yeah, the 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 storytelling continues. Yeah, and anyway, it's like having Carmelo out there made it all good too, because like you can see his like facial reaction. He's like, oh no, 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 and we're like when that three count almost happened, and he goes like, oh no, it still goes, yay. Yeah, Carmelo's uh, acting was on point during the whole thing. Yeah, like he he really like he, he he's gonna make the main roster. Like just, I I'm I'm glad it's just wrestlers seem to be like getting the they're becoming better actors and not just like 
okay actors and really great wrestlers. Yeah. Because they got like Triple H and William Regal to work up, learn from. Mm -hmm. And uh, other people too, but that's only one I could, that's only two I could think of right now. Is Albert still working in the back there? I think, I think, I think he's still working at the Performance Center. Yeah. He's got him working there, helping, helping people out. Yeah. But yeah, so, um, Trick William gets busted up, so he's bleeding again, because in the first match he was bleeding too. So this one he's bleeding again. I thought he was, I thought he just had like, uh, the situation just with his knee. I didn't know he was bleeding like that in the first match. Yeah, like we uh, kind of mentioned it in the first match, didn't we? Like he was like bleeding a little bit. Oh yeah, like his l lip was b b b busted open. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, is that I didn't notice that. Oh. When I okay. was watching the match. Yeah, the only thing that I noticed was his like his knee issue. So. Right. Right. And so, like, a Trick Williams tried, but he didn't get the win. Ilya Dragunov gets the three count and retains the title. Do you think his nose is broken or is just busted? Uh, it looks uh, like it's broken. It, it might be broken, but knowing Ilya, he probably just doesn't care. Yeah. But I have to mention that final spot, though. Like, of course, there were a few false finishes, but this is a spot I've always wanted to see. Like, like an old-school Western stand-down, one wrestler on the, on one corner, the other in the uh, and the other wrestler in the other corner, staring each other down, and then they're both like doing their taunts for their finishers, and then they just start running at each other. And it's just oh oh yeah, I completely forgot about that. Yeah, I've always wanted to see that kind of spot in wrestling. Like like that is cinema type stuff right there. Yeah, I completely forgot and, about that. But thank you for reminding me. And, and yeah, then, and then of course um, Ilya with uh, the hit with um, is, is it is it just the torpedo headbutt or is it still called torpedo Moscow? Torpedo Moscow, they said. I think so, yeah. And uh, of course, one, two, three, he gets the pin. And uh, in the post match. Yeah, it's like we were all thinking it. We we're thinking the entire time. It's like, come on, Carmelo, this is your time to turn. Turn on him. It never happened. And then, and then of the course, one. NXT uh, yeah. put the thing in the corner to, to think it's going to cut. But no, you, like you got to learn. Like when they do that, it's not really over until the camera turns off. <laughs> but yeah, like uh, they hug each other, and then Carmelo's behind him, and then he changes his look, and you know, oh, it's on, and he just head, it just puts him down, and the he crowd goes, goes wild. To quote, um, I can't remember who said this back in the day, but he he took his leg from out under his leg. Oh, Owen, <laughs> he took my leg out of his leg. <laughs> no, he, I, he, whatever he said something like to that effect. Yeah, rest yeah, in peace, exactly. Owen. Yeah. So yeah, like Carmelo Hayes is beating up on Trick. He's like Trick's on the ground, going like, no, no, no. And, and I'm pretty sure you heard him talk direction to him, like stop, because you can hear clearly hear Lee on the mic, because those mics. Jesus, man, you can hear a lot now. <laughs> it's like stop for now, stop for now, or something like that, like giving directions. And, uh... So do you think that um, it's going to, uh, like, th this feud is going to stay in NXT, or do you think it's going to spread to the main roster? Well, isn't Trick going to SmackDown, or is that Carmelo? Which one's going to SmackDown? So Carmelo has been, been on SmackDown for a couple of weeks before Royal Rumble. Okay. So most likely he'll be on SmackDown. Okay. Trick, they've been announced that Trick will be at Raw. Okay. So uh, we'll see how that plans out. Yeah, so mm -hmm. Trick goes to Raw, Carmelo and SmackDown. But we'll find out tomorrow what happens. I would love if they have this match at Mania. That would be a great match, Carmelo versus Trick at Mania. It just, it just needs to be pushed more. Like, or. Obviously... Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 you can say or. I said, or NXT stand and deliver, which is the paper PLE before WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. I mean, but, okay, so obviously with NXT, like the majority of the, like 
the bigger, the big story, if you're going to do that, like, obviously, Trick and Carmelo, who are b- practically on the main roster right now, like, if they will ever have a match, it will be at Stand and Deliver. Like, yeah, there's no way it will be at WrestleMania. Or like, in no the pre-show at match at, or in the pre-show match at WrestleMania, who knows? I don't think they're going to do pre-show matches. They haven't been doing that for the longest, I think. Kickoff match, for, I mean, for kickoff match. Year. No, for a whole year now. They they stopped doing it. Oh, right. Okay, all right. I think the, I don't know if they did it at Crown Jewel, because you know how Crown Jewel is. Like, that's like mm-hmm. a whole other entity. Yeah. Other than that, like, everything else, like, they stopped doing the, the kickoff. Yeah, it. Uh, Saudi Arabia shows are like uh, Dragon Ball Z movies. They're just not canon. <laughs> There's Dragon Ball Z Evolution. I finally saw that. And even I was pissed. And I don't even know what the hell is going on. Well, no, that's the live action movie. That movie just doesn't exist. That's, I'm what, I'm, that's about what I'm saying. The, that's what I'm saying. Even no, I'm, even, I, I'm talking about the animated Dragon Ball Z movies. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, those aren't canon. They're they're their own separate entity entirely, just like Crown Jewel. Very true. And Elimination Chamber coming up in Perth. Well, no, that's canon because like it's just Crown Jewel is just something else but um but but no uh the the australia shows have been great yeah they're really great because australians are a different crowd oh yeah they're they're crazy man Hmm. which which crowds are way better australian crowds new york crowds canadian crowds or puerto rican crowds. puerto rican crowds but that was for one pay-per-view wasn't it i i want them to go back that was such a good crowd yeah i was Selena Vega. That I, I actually got emotional with the response Selena Vega got. Oh, for backlash? Yeah. 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 Now it's going to be in France. So. France. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting because I've never seen a show in France. I think. Well, Montreal Survivor Series, but that's a different thing. <laughs> that's French Canadian. Yes. Very true. <laughs> Well, anyways, that was it for uh, NXT Vengeance Day. Final thoughts? It was a good uh, PLE. Like, I had no issues with it. I will say, though, um, um, I wasn't really paying attention to the Dijak uh, Joe Gacy match. Okay. By the way, so like, that was the only match that I really didn't pay attention to. Other than that, mm. uh, everything else was cool. Yeah, I was barely paying attention to anything when Barry and Corbin was in. I just, like, zoned out and then Zoned back in when Braun Breaker was there. And um, a, what, one last thing. This um, b- 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 before, uh, I, I will say for, for the one match I did uh, see, I enjoyed it. I, I really, because I, I missed the entirety of uh, the, the PLE except for the main event, which is the one I wanted to see the most. Good timing. It was great. But with Dijak, I um I kind of want to see him go up to the main roster and like do something with Gunther. I would like to see that too, because Dijak really is um yeah because Dijak man holy crap. Like or, or maybe like if um if they do a like Dijak and Ilya Dragunov, uh sorry Ilya Dragunov team up. And, uh, like, do a tag team match with, like, Imperium. Like, I that would be a great sort of feud. And then maybe, um, I, I would also say, like, Alexander Wolf could also, I'd bring him back. And uh, maybe have him sort of be, like, a trio for a bit with Ilya and Dijak. But That'd then have him... But then have them betray them and go back and form the four man Imperium once again. I completely forgot Wolf was in Imperium. Jesus. All right. Yeah, I like to see Imperium, the four man group again. You know, you know what's crazy? Uh, Guy Jack reminds me of Cesaro a little bit. He does. He does. And so it's one of those. It's one of those where it's like, it's you know, a- you know, Cesaro is, is champion bound, but he will never get a championship. That's Dijak. That's yeah, Dijak. Cesaro, but Claudio Castagnoli will is former is not former Ring of Honor champion. But if he ever goes back to WWE, he's a mid card. Well, now Vince, now that Vince is gone, who knows? 
I he, remember. No, uh, they'll be stuck. He'll be stuck in mid card. Like, yeah. There's no way he'll be a champ like that. Yeah. If he will ever go back. You know, I I remember watching a uh, an interview um, where I think it was Kevin Owens talking about like a bunch of different wrestlers, and uh, it was uh, who was the most underrated wrestler, and uh, he straight up was like mm, Cesaro, but it's just he, he he said his automatic response was Cesaro, but he said every other person in the locker room says that, so he had to come up with another answer. But it is so though. he is underrated, Cesaro. He well no, he's not just underrated. He is the most underrated wrestler who has ever went through WWE to never get a world title. Ten years. He was think, mostly right? a tag Ten team, years. dude. He was always in tag teams. I will say, the bar was great. Yeah, I love the bar. But the bar was great. That WrestleMania thing with Nicholas was funny, but yeah. <laughs> That was so dumb, but so great. Yeah. <coughs> ah, so is that, I guess we're done, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. So, yeah. So whenever we come back another time, probably for, I don't know, I don't think for Elimination Chamber, because that'll be at 2 o'clock in the morning. I ain't <laughs> saying that late. That, uh, that, that pisses me off, because, like, Obviously, Australia is like a day later. Yeah. <laughs> it was like at least 14, 14 hours later. So yeah. it's like their their pay per view or PLE, excuse me, is supposed to be five a.m. Eastern or Universal Time and two a.m. Pacific. Like Somewhere around that time, but yeah, I'm just gonna record a day in advance. But yeah, <laughs> I'll watch it later in the day because <laughs> you know I, mean, I, I tried. Like, I tried Most likely well, sorry. Solitaire will get it. Like, Solitaire yeah. will get it before we get it. <laughs> yeah, he'll see it before. Yeah, very true. Well, anyway, with that, guys, we're out. Have a good one. This is the Doif and Coco speaking. And I totally overtook oh. Coco's thing. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Anyways, have a good night, y'all. Bye. Thank you. Fuck you. Bye. Uh, yes. Oh, you ended your stream, huh?